very, very common to have these out of the blue um, moments where you're eating something either really, really cold or you're eating something really acidic um, or sweet um, and, and sometimes even hot that can make the innards of the tooth trigger the nerve um, that resides um, in the core of the tooth to, to act up, to fire and cause, you know, pain that doesn't last forever, but it's definitely something that is concerning and is brought up all the time. Um, and there are things to do to just minimize the regularity of these sensitive moments when consuming food. Um, I've got a few tips and tricks that um, almost always work if it's not a true cavitation in the tooth, not a true cavity or something um more serious um, with the integrity of the tooth structure. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what you can do to minimize uh, dentinal sensitivity um, related to external heat and um, food sources. Well, and out of the blue, you have a tooth that just kind of starts talking to you. It, it you know, it's sensitive for a few seconds and then it goes away. And you're wondering, you know, shoot, you know, what was that? Did I, did I break something? Um, you know, immediately think, oh gosh, there must be a major problem with my tooth. Um, or a moment where you have something really cold and you immediately shift uh, the cold food uh, to the opposite side of the mouth because you have an acute pain um, on that side where the cold hit. I'd say about 85% of the pain reported in my dental chair on a daily basis uh, has to do with dentinal hypersensitivity, enamel um, thinning, and wear at the gum line, uh, which exposes the root surface. Uh, so I'm going to uh, let you know what you can do about it. There's different things um, uh, that can be done to fortify, to strengthen those areas, and also certain products that um, and methods of cleaning uh, that can kind of keep the area from being triggered too regularly. Active ingredient that usually um, is is the one that seals um, seals up and really really slows down the nerve response is something called potassium nitrate and so uh, potassium nitrate is a depolarizer it kind of tells the nerve um, upon topical uh, application um, you know brushing two times a day with it uh, will basically start telling the nerve to stop firing in those exposed areas and slowly over time after using the sensitivity toothpaste we see a reduction of response uh, triggers and pain when eating things of extreme temperatures or extreme acidity. Um, the problem doesn't go away completely, but it does minimize it. And uh, so that's the number one thing. I know very common people use Sensodyne toothpaste. Um, Prodamel um, is, also contains uh, potassium nitrate. And um, the tricky thing is, is that most people don't know that when you use these types of sensitivity relief toothpaste to address uh, uh, sensitivities, you really have to brush it on uh, spit out excess, but then you're going to leave the residual on the teeth. And that's kind of a foreign concept because, you know, usually uh, the immediate response is wanting to rinse out and get the residual toothpaste off of our teeth. But with sensitivity toothpaste, it's really being used as like a topical cream to sit and actually work beyond just the application, the initial application with brushing it on your teeth. And that's how it builds up in the surfaces that are exposed. So a lot of people don't know that fact or don't read the box um, because, hey, you know, it's toothpaste. How different can it be? Uh, but that's a proper way to use sensitivity, really toothpaste. Um, the other things you want to do is make sure that you're really, you know, brushing um, with a real soft bristle toothbrush um, and not aggravating tissue. Sometimes uh, patients who have thinner enamel and also have uh, some recession, you know, tend to use an electric toothbrush. And although electric toothbrushes are very efficient at breaking a plaque on the surface, it also can aggravate and irritate the um, exposed surfaces. So, you know, got to be careful with technique. Um, and, and again, plaque is very, very acidic. So if um, we're not keeping up with our dental hygiene and flossing regularly and touching those tissues, plaque is going to accumulate and also be leaking out lactic acid um, um, between cleanings. And so that also can trigger um, more sensitive uh, teeth and, and sensitive gums. So um, technique matters, toothpaste matters and um, being mindful of the foods we're eating and in moderate temperatures. And with these practices, you know, usually over time, these things kind of just simmer away and, and more, are more tolerable. And uh, again, um, if you have any questions, always seek advice from your own dental provider. Parafunctional habits, such as clenching or grinding, are things that we do subconsciously, usually under when we're under high levels of stress, when we're sleeping, times that we are, you know, kind of working out tension uh, through the muscles of our head and neck. And clenching and grinding is a huge cause of sensitivity on the teeth, 
people don't often associate it because it's happening at one point of, of the night or the day and the effects of it are happening at the time, at the point in time that we're eating foods and in these external stimuli, um, such as, you know, our cold foods and drinks or hard, crunchy foods um, and our acidic fruits and juices and even sometimes the heat, like I've mentioned before, all of those things all of a sudden are, are, are catapult, they catapult the, the nerve response because we've worn our enamel thin and stress the tooth out, um, even leading to loss of enamel uh, through through the, the process of the, the arches rubbing against each other um, um, during times of non, non-eating, you know, and that's really what our mouths are for. Our teeth are our tools to get uh, nutrients in us. So, you know, if we're wearing them thin um, during times other than actually eating a time that we call mastication, we definitely have more um, pain um, associated with with exposed dentin. So night guards can be made minimally, um, but night guards are just really a buffer to keep the arches from rubbing together, but it doesn't truly really fix jaw position or the way the, the upper teeth and the bottom teeth relate. So uh, for a true um, uh, fix, the best thing you can do to alleviate sensitivity related to clenching and grinding is to have an evaluation, a consultation done at an orthodontist um, you can get a referral from your regular dentist um, or just seek out um, a reputable uh, dentist in your area um, or ask a friend and, uh, you know, get get, in, get a, a consultation done to see if there's anything that can be improved about the way that your jaw fits together. I've had patients over the years that have actually reported not only the sensitivity on their teeth and the nerve response, uh, you know, improve and, and lessen um, after traditional braces and or um, Invisalign treatment um, at the orthodontist. Um, but also things like, you know, feeling like their head and neck were, you know, in the right place. They're, they're clicking and popping in their jaws, you know, um, has, has subsides. Um, and, and this isn't in every case, but this is best case scenario. You actually get all these benefits from aligning, what we call aligning your teeth, reducing the stress being put on them unnecessarily and protecting yourself when you sleep. And, um, and that's another way of really reducing the sensitivity that occurs when enamel is being worn thin and during times other than eating.